All right, everyone, welcome back to Learning SAS with Jelly. Today we are on lesson 17 and we're gonna talk about the PROC univariate procedure. Now, this is a very, very common procedure to utilize for exploratory data analysis. So you're gonna be able to look at a numeric variable before you actually add that variable to a model, which is very important to always explore your data beforehand. So we're going to explore our data. So let's go ahead and get started. So what actually is this procedure? So this procedure is gonna give you some statistics of a single numeric variable. So things like kurtosis, skewness, mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, range, interquartile range, et cetera. The list goes on and on and on. So you're gonna be able to get some nice summary statistics from a single numeric variable. And it's also gonna plot out some nice visuals of that variable. So you can see if a variable has outliers, if it's normally distributed around a mean, you can look at the cumulative density, you can look at some probability graphs. So all of this is going to be beneficial in order to explore your data for PROC univariate. So let's look at the syntax. So pretty simple syntax, right? You're just gonna call proc univariate, right? So that is gonna be our keyword. Data is gonna equal whatever data set you wanna look at. The keyword var, and after that keyword is gonna be your numeric variable. If you don't specify any variables, it's just going to assume that you want to look at all numeric variables within a data set, which maybe you do, maybe you don't. Of course, if you have 300 numeric variables, that's gonna be a long time to generate output. So make sure that you specify the variable name when possible. And we're gonna get right into an example, okay? So we know this procedure is utilized to look at a single numeric variable, and we know that it can give us some statistics and it can also give us some graphs about how this variable is distributed, right? So in our example here, we have our keyword proc univariate, data equals sashelp.cars, and we're looking at the variable miles per gallon in the city, right? And so we see here that there's a lot of different things that comes out. So we have our mean, we have the median, we have the mode, some standard deviation, the variance, the range, and the interquartile range, right? So the mean tells us that average value and standard deviation tells us the spread of our data, right? So the more standard deviations, the, the wider the distribution, right? The data is gonna be further spread out. The lower the standard um, deviation, the data is gonna be closely centered around that mean. We also think have things like kurtosis and skewness, which is gonna talk about the distribution, the tails. We have good old variance, right? We have how many observations were included, um, the sum of the observations better yet. So this is the sum of all the miles per gallon in the city of all our observations out of 428 observations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so some nice summary statistics along with other things such as standard error for the mean, number of observations, some of the observations, et cetera, some, some extra oomph than just a proc means procedure, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna look at is the graphs that it outputs, right? So here I have two graphs. So each graph gets its own line followed by a semicolon. So I have a histogram of miles per gallon in the city, and then I have a cumulative density plot for miles per gallon in the city. And we can definitely see that our data is pretty much skewed to the right, right? So it's skewed to the right. We have a few outliers right here with 60 miles per gallon and so forth and so forth. The cumulative density function is always gonna end at 100%, right? So it's based off of this, if we were to look at 30 and go here, so the miles per gallon within the city, that's 30 miles per gallon or less makes up about 65% of our data, right? So that's what that tells us. If I were to look at 20 miles per gallon and were to draw straight up, right? And I see almost 40% of my data has a miles per gallon of 20 or less, right? So a cumulative density distribution is just going to look at everything at that point and before that point, right? 
Awesome. So now let's also look at some graph options. So we have the histogram and notice how our histogram is just bars. We can actually overlay a normal curve over this histogram. And that's what this keyword normal is. So there's keyword normal, there's keyword exponential, there's keyword um, Weibull distribution, keyword logarithmic. So any any curve that you want to overlay on your distribution, you can call after the variable name slash and that keyword. So now when we do that, we see that a nice little bell curve has been overlaid on our distribution. So we can more clearly see that this distribution is not normal, right? So all in all, that is proc univariate. Let's go into SAS and actually code some of this up, okay? So I'm in SAS on demand for academics. If you, this is a free interface. So look at lesson one that I'll have link in the description if you want to utilize this. But on the left-hand side of my SAS studio, I'm going down to libraries and I'm gonna enhance my libraries. And then I'm going to click the drop down arrow next to SAS help. This is gonna be a list of all the practice data sets that you can utilize to practice some of your SAS programming. So here, when I expand cars, I see all the different variables that's in the cars data set, which is really, really nice because I can see the type of variable in the variable name. So cylinders is numeric because it has the one, two, three. Drivetrain is character because it has this alpha. Okay, and as I mentioned, Proc Univariate is going to be utilizing numeric features, right? So we type Proc Univariate data equals sashelp.cars, which is gonna be this data set right here. The variable that we wanna look at is miles per gallon in the city, and we're gonna go ahead and run that. And when we do, we get some of the same output that was in the PowerPoint, right? In the middle, we have things like our statistics, mean, median, mode. At the top, we have number of observations. We have some standard errors. We have our coefficient variation, which is gonna make sense when we go into modeling. We have some quantiles, right? As well as some extreme observations. So it'll say, hey, observation 167, that has 10 miles per gallon in the city. So that's the lowest. Observation 151 has that outlier that we saw on our graph, which was 60 miles per gallon in the city. So it gives us a nice um, visual of miles per gallon per city. If I wanted to add another variable, so let's go ahead and expand SAS help again, expand cars. I can add like miles per gallon highway. So I would just hit space, miles per gallon highway. And I can go ahead and run that. And now we will get two separate outputs, right? So they don't combine them. It's gonna be the output for every single variable where the first one is gonna be miles per gallon in the city and the next one is gonna be miles per gallon for the highway, right? Awesome. So that is our statistical output. Now, what if I wanted to add my statistics as well as some visuals, okay? So let's go ahead and remove this normal for now with no options. So I have histogram and then I have the cumulative density function plot and I can just go ahead and run that. And after it gives me the statistics at the bottom, it gives me some nice visuals, right? So I can see that miles per gallon in the city is skewed to the right with that outlier that we just saw with the extreme observation being 60 miles per gallon. We also have a nice cumulative density function that's, that basically shows us what percentage of our data is at a certain miles per gallon and below. And if I wanted to add like a normal curve, even though I know that that is skewed, I can do a keyword normal, for instance, and it's going to add the normal curve overlays with my mean, which is mu being 20 miles per gallon and my standard deviation, which is sigma being 5.2. So we can look at a normal curve overlay there. We can look at like a Weeble curve and we can see how that looks, right? As well. And we see that this one is, you know, pretty, um, short, it's shorter, right? And it's gonna give us theta 
and some other information here that's dealing with the viable distribution, right? But those are what those options do. And you definitely can look up documentation on these options in order to choose the right one that fits your data or something that you want to look at, right? And of course, this is our exponential curve. All right, so that is Proc Univeret. So please like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to go into more ways where we can explore our data because data exploration is very, very important before we begin modeling. But until then, thank you for tuning in with Learning SAS with Jelly, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.